Hello and welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. Today we jump around a bit. I am not done with the gate manipulation videos, clocks, inverters, logic gates, stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to come back to that. Uh, but as you saw in the last video, I had to use some, or had to, but I used some drums to show off some of those features that the gate modules uh, can be used for. Uh, and for that reason, drum modules are good for showing off gates because then we don't know, need the CV and stuff like that. So today I'm going to make a drum module which is not the best one out there. I might have even picked the worst one. I don't know. Uh, I picked it out of sentimentality. I'll go through that in a bit when we look at the schematics. Um, but uh, so the bass drum that you heard in the last episode did sound quite good. The snare drum not so much and the hi-hat in this module is awful. But we'll get to that. Also worth noting is that you can make drums with a few of the modules that we've already built throughout this series uh, and I will make a separate video and release that also today on sh how to make uh, drums like what you hear in the background with without a specific drum module just by using the modules that we already have made. The drum module is mostly to free up all those other, other modules because you need a lot of other modules just to make one drum sound and yeah. So uh, thank you to my Patreons who help me by supporting me over on Patreon.com and if you want to you can do that too. Uh, and with that let's go and look at the schematics and how to build uh, this module which I really don't think you should build but I'll show you this anyway because it's good to know when things don't work as well. As I said in the introduction I made these drums out of sentimentality and that's because since I started collecting schematics the Debop by Electronic for Music, Tom G uh, I've wanted to do this module and this is of course a drum machine with drum sounds and while I want to make sequencers as well we're not there yet and I just wanted to hear what the drum sounds sounded like as always with EFM designs they are not always the best described ones especially now loads of years later um, but listen to this, what he says. The generators can be compared in sound to the 808. And all, I always loved the sound, but they felt out of favor when sampled, blah, blah, blah. So, this, an 808, and you get really simple 808 sounds, that sounds wonderful. Uh, so, uh, so, if we look at the schematics, it's in a zip file that then has a small little web page in it and when we look at the schematics uh, so this is the whole schematics where up here is the sequencer part and down here is the uh, different sounds part and we get a bit better here so here is here is the noise part of the circuit for the hi-hat and the snare and then so those are connected here so here is the snare so here's the snare body the this is I'm guessing a twin T filter uh, so the snare goes in here and there's the body of the snare and then the goes down here so this here is the uh, amplifier I guess or, or that get that puts the noise for the snare out on this main audio bus here and here and here is the hi-hat that goes in here 
to this one. So you will hear that the hi-hat is really awful in this one. And I'm guessing that is this little circuit, these three components here that I really didn't manage to get good ones. Could also be these two here. Because if we look really careful, what is that 3.9N? Or is it 3.9 meg? And if I put anything over or anything in the mega ohm range, the sounds get really strange and or not strange, but the the bleed through gets even worse. So I have a really small value here. And so these two are I actually because I can't read out what they are. I actually made these uh, put these in a socket so I can pull them out and try different values. Uh, but I think I ended up with just using a 10 ohm resistor because that's the only thing that really made sense. I also put this one, this capacitor here in a socket because I can't read if that is 0.082 or, or 0 0.002. Uh, also, I ended up with using a 0 0.002. And then the bass drum, also that you heard in the last episode, is this one here. Also a twin T filter, I think. It's a bit, it looks a bit like it, but uh, and has some of that features, but uh, some of them, yeah. I, I don't take my word for it. Um, so, and then they get some together here. I'm unsure if there is actually a filter here as well. Uh, maybe this circuit should have been one for each instrument. That would have been better uh, to separate the channels and uh, mix them in the outside world instead. Right now, you can't change the volume between the different sounds. But again, as you can see, it's really difficult to read the schematics. And I did redraw it with the values that I think are the correct ones. Uh, again, I can't really recommend that you build this, but I will uh, link the schematics anyway. All right, let's uh, try to connect this then. So this is quite simple. Um, we need a clock. And we begin with a bass drum. So the bass drum sounds quite good. Uh, so here's the, we only have one out and a master volume here. And here's one of the things, it does sound the it bleeds through on the hi-hat uh, so by connecting something to noise out get a bit more quiet that could be a flaw I've done I've checked a lot of times but we have to live with that for now so here we have the bass anyway. Get quite quickly the decay goes uh, into self-oscillation quite quickly. So just a click and Uh, let's take the snare next. And this should of course be the other way around. And 
then lastly the hi-hat So this does not sound very good, I am aware of that, and just I'm guessing that just uh, removing the, uh, the hi-hat would probably help a bit. So now we remove the hi-hat and those two drums are fine, I guess. You can hear a, f a bit of uh, noise crackling through on the snare. So maybe only those two drums and this module is fine. Uh, so yeah. So with that we have uh, quite a interesting sounding, let's stick with that, uh, drum module uh, which we can use to uh, show off uh, some of the uh, gate functions that uh, I'm still going to make. And again we're going to come back to making better drums than drum modules than this one. Uh, in the next few weeks uh, I need to make some uh, extra modules of the ones I have. I feel I'm lacking a bit in, in some modules. I think I need to make a few more uh, VCOs uh, and all those. And I also need to fix some of the modules that have actually broken during my work here and add a few features to some that I think they would benefit from and also just fix parts that have come that I haven't had uh, time to put into some of the modules. So these are the reset and, and clock buttons for the clock divider which is just hooked together in a bad way so need to fix that. So there's a lot of those things that I need to do and also I think I need some vacation and I'm going, probably going to go away uh, for some days away. Uh, so just so you know if there won't come a video next week know that I am uh, working on improving this anyway and we'll get uh, a logic gate video out soon. And I also hope that I can make some of those when I just sit and make modules uh, or, or fix, I might be able to do a live stream on those. If you want to just sit and watch me solder and discuss things. With that, uh, thank you. Hope you like this video, even though the final result or end result in this video wasn't that great maybe uh, but it's again it's good to know that not everything on the internet works I've said that before there's a lot of schematics out there sometimes you build it and it works sometimes it, you build it and you need to 
fix some things, which you, we've also done. <coughs> and sometimes you build it, it doesn't work, you need to fix it and still doesn't end up as great. But such is life. Uh, subscribe, bell, all that things and uh, if you want to ask questions use the comment section and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.